Hi everyone, in this video we will see how bridge domain works on a Cisco device. So let's get started. First of all, we need to know what is a bridge domain. A bridge domain represents a layer 2 broadcast domain. We do it with the help of service instances or EVC, Ethernet Virtual Connections. We will see uh, shortly how to make it, but for now, just keep in mind that we do it with the help of EVCs. Now the question is, why do you need it? So one of the major benefits of a bridge domain is to enable VLAN support on non-VLAN capable devices. Now suppose here you have this R1 router, okay? And this R1 router does not support VLAN means you cannot configure a VLAN on this R1 Cisco router like a CSR. And if I have a switch 1 uh, connected to the port GI1 and switch 2 to port GI2 and suppose these ports of switch 1 and switch 2 they are layer 2 switch ports, how can I enable the communication between switch 1 and switch 2? We can't do that. Now with the help of bridge domain, you can do that, okay? Because bridge domain makes it possible for switch 1 and switch 2 to switch the frames or packets in different broadcast domains between each other okay now the second major benefit of a bridge domain is to overcome vlan scale limitations so switch vlan namespace are capped at 4096 moving the vlan id from a per switch to a per port basis this is very important okay because the vlan tag that you configure on R1 here on these ports GI1 and GI2 they are there are significant per port not per device okay and it significantly increases the flexibility reducing the number of individual VLANs required now this is especially valuable in VXLAN networks where VLAN limits become a constraint. Now we know that with VLAN, VXLAN, you can have approximately 16 million VNIs, VXLAN network identifiers. But the VLAN is, uh, has a limitation that you can only have 4096 VLANs per switch, okay? so. I'll make a separate video for uh, VXLAN, how to do the bridge domain uh, for the VXLAN, but here in this video, we will keep things simple. Just keep in mind that the VLAN tags on R1, they are significant per port basis. So this is going to be our topology and you can see the device names, platforms and the operating system. So switch 1 and switch 2, um, they are running iOS V and R1 is iOS XE and R2 is iOS V. So uh, this is our topology. So the ports on switches, these ports GI01 and this GI01, they are going to be the switch ports, uh, trunk ports, and here GI1 and GI2, we will configure Ethernet virtual connections on these ports, and GI3 and GI01 between R1 and R2, 
they are going to be the routed ports l3 so now we will learn to configure three different scenarios so in the scenario one we want to enable the communication between switch one and switch two using an untagged vlan 10 so here on this trunk port we will configure the vlan 10 okay on switch one and on switch two but it will be native means untagged and we will allow the communication via r1 okay between switch one and switch two so in scenario two we will configure switch one and switch two with a tagged vlan 20 okay same process we, we will configure the vlan on switch one and switch two but this time tagged okay and we will enable the communication via r1 and in the scenario three we will configure switch one with the vlan 30 and switch two with the vlan 40 means this vlan 30 will not be present on switch two and the vlan 40 will not be present on switch one which means that we will need to enable some kind of inter vlan routing on r1 which we will do with with the help of bdi bridge domain interfaces okay and then we will also enable the routing in this scenario so that switch one and switch two can talk to each other as well as this r2 so now let's look at the scenario one so first of all let's configure switch one and switch two so first of all we will configure the vlan 10 okay and then the interface vlan 10 which is the svi the ip address 10 1 10 so for the switch one we will use dot one and for switch two we will use dot two so here switch one and switch two so we configure the svis and then we will pass the vlan we will configure these ports as trunk ports and we will configure the vlan 10 as the native vlan and we will allow the vlan on the ports simple right so now let's see how to configure r1 to enable this communication in vlan 10 here you go so on r1 you can see that this gi1 configuration here first of all no ip address because this is supposed to be an ethernet virtual connection we are using this port for bridging so there is no ip address on the port we will uh, uh, no shut the port and this is the configuration for an untagged vlan okay so this is the ser service instance 10 you don't have to match this service instance with the vlan id or the bridge domain id so you, you will configure the service instance okay and encapsulation please notice untagged because here the packets that come out of switch one or switch two they will not be tagged so we have to mention that encapsulation is untagged and this is very important the bridge domain 10 this has to match with the ethernet with the gi2 bridge domain 10 okay these two has has to match because you want to say that they are in the same broadcast domain okay similarly on the gi2 we will configure the ethernet virtual connection service instance encapsulation and the bridge domain 10 now let's do ver verification now if you ping from switch 1 to 10 1 10 2 which is the ip on switch 2 on the vlan 10 svi 10 you can see the ping is successful now if i look at r1 how uh, to see how the mac uh, the the bridge domain table looks like so that's the command show bridge domain 10 and you can see the mac addresses so what are these mac addresses these mac addresses are the svi 10 macs on switch 1 and switch 2 so you can see this mac this mac is coming from switch one 
on the port GI1, okay, and it's on the SVI 10 on switch 1, and similarly this one on switch 2. So now let's move on to scenario 2. So here we want to enable the communication between switch 1 and switch 2 using a tagged VLAN 20. So same process. Now what we will do is uh, configure the VLAN 20, okay, and uh, we will configure the SVI, switch 1 and switch 2. For switch 1, we will use dot 1 and for switch 2, we will use dot 2. Here I have mentioned it. And then we will just allow the tag VLAN on the ports, these ports. Yeah. So now let's look at R1, how the R1 looks like. So this is the Ethernet virtual connection configuration on the port. So on the GI1, first of all, we will create a new service instance. You can see that this time I have chosen a different number, 200, because they, they don't have to match with the tag. Okay, and encapsulation command. And here, this is a new command we introduced, rewrite increase tag pop one symmetric. So for the tag traffic, we have to use this command. Now let's look at this command, what is it doing? So we, we, we will divide this command, okay, in, into keywords and we will try to understand what each keyword means. Rewrite ingress. This indicates that the action will be applied when a packet enters the device. So as the word ingress means inside. So when the packet comes from switch 1 into GI1, rewrite something. Rewrite ingress. So when the packet comes from switch 1 to R1, when it comes inside GI1, it says that rewrite something, rewrite at the ingress. Now what to rewrite? Tag pop1 means, this means the command will remove the first outermost VLAN tag from the packet because our packet will be having just one tag. So it is saying that remove the tag. Okay. Now, what does the symmetric keyword doing? This crucial keyword ensures that when the packet leaves the device, the same VLAN tag that was removed on ingress will be added back on. So what it is saying that when the traffic from switch 2 comes, into R1 and if it has to exit out GI1, we want the tag 20 put back onto the packet, simple. So with the rewrite command, you use this symmetric keyword so that this behavior, you want it on both sides because switch one is expecting a tag for the VLAN 20. Now similarly for the GI2, same command. So service instance, again, you don't have to use the same service instance ID on both the ports, okay? It will still work if you use the different service instance ID, but you have to make sure that you match the tag here on between switch two and GI2, okay? Now, Again, same command, rewrite ingress tag pop one symmetric and bridge domain. And you have to match this broadcast domain with this broadcast domain. They have to match, okay, 2000. So now let's ping from switch one. So you, you can see that if I now ping from 10.122 to, um, from switch one to switch two, the ping is successful. And now if I look at the bridge domain 2000 table, that's how it looks like. These are the MAC addresses of SVI 20 on switch 1 and switch 2. Now let's move on to the next scenario, scenario 3. So what we want to do is here, the VLAN 30 is only on switch 1 and VLAN 40 only on switch 2. So uh, let's look at switch 1. We, we will uh, configure the VLAN and then the interface and we will are also enabling the OSPF on the VLAN 30 on switch 1 and then we will pass the VLAN, same process. And now on switch two, VLAN, SVI, OSPF, and we'll pass the VLAN on the port. Now next, now on R1, same process, okay? Here, this time towards switch one, we are just having a service instance for the tag 30, and toward GI2, just for the tag 40, okay? 
Now this is something new, BDI, bridge domain, because this time we want a routing function on R1. Otherwise switch one and switch two cannot communicate in different broadcast domains because the VLAN 30 wants to talk to VLAN 40. So what we will do is this is just like an SVI, a switched virtual interface. Here you have BDI, bridge domain interface. So the IP I choose um, on R1 for the uh, broadcast domain uh, VLAN 30 is 10.1.30.200 and we will also enable the OSPF. And similarly for the VLAN 40, uh, the BDI 40, we configure the IP and the OSPF and now on between R1 and R2, I will configure the interface with this IP 172.16.11 and I will also enable the OSPF on the port because I want the uh, communication for VLAN 30 and 40 with the R2. So that's why I have enabled OSPF here, here and here on R1 for uh, BDI 30 and 40 and here on SV, SVI 30 and here on SVI 40. Okay, now on R2 it's simple. We will configure the IP and the OSPF and simple. Okay, now check the ping. So if we ping from switch one to switch two, 10141, the ping is successful. And now if I ping from switch one to this R2, you can see the ping is successful. And if I come onto this R1 device and see show IP OSPF neighbor, you can see that all the neighbor states are full, in full state, okay? And here you can see BDI, the interfaces where we enable the OSPF. Now at the end, there is one challenge for you, okay? And challenge is, suppose we have VLAN 50, configured on switch one and the VLAN 60 on switch two. But the subnet is same. They are different broadcast domains, but you can see that the IP 10151 and 10152 from the same subnet. Okay, so here uh, uh, for the bridge domain, as, as you know that for the tag VLAN, I will use dot 50 because it has to match with switch one and dot 60 here for switch two. Do you think that switch one can ping switch two? I know that this is a weird design, but this is just to test your understanding about the topic. If you uh, understand the topic well, you, you should be able to answer this, okay? So uh, let me know about your opinion in the comment section and um, you have to uh, uh, write yes or no and the question is can switch one ping 10152 or not that's the end of our demo session for this pdf file you can check the link in the description until next time goodbye